Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new tutorial. I'm creating an altered round canvas, like a circular canvas. And I just put this here because usually when you put white canvases in the middle of the camera, it, everything goes out of focus. So I'm just keeping this here so it focuses on this. And this is actually part of a gift exchange for spring. We gathered a few of our, a few of my friends, got together, and we're exchanging gifts. And each person, kind of like a secret Santa, each person is giving to somebody else, but it's not secret. So it's not like a secret Santa, but it's just just fun. And we're sending it to each other all over the world. And this one is for Kate, and I'm going to be sending it to her soon, as soon as I'm finished. So I'm going to create a mixed media style project, and I'm going to do this. Uh, live. What I mean is I'm not going to be editing in speed mode, like in the speed mode. I'm going to try. Hopefully it will not be too long because I just really don't have time to edit anything. I will try to definitely cut out the drying times and different things that are necessary. So it saves you time on watching, but everything will be basically in regular motion, real time. So you can follow along. The first thing that I'm using, and I'm using, this is a piece of napkin. I have it left over from another project, but you can also use tissue paper the same way. And I'm also going to use some soft matte gel from Prima. And this is just to give texture to the background. And what I want to do is I'm going to add some of this gel to the background. And you can save any type of tissue paper. You know when they give you tissue paper from like, you know, when you buy something like clothes or something like that, you can, I just save everything. Or you can buy obviously cheap tissue paper at the dollar store, Amazon, wherever. And, and you can just, you know, tissue paper is just the simplest, cheapest thing to use. And it's so cool to create texture. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just adding some gel to everything using my silicone brush. This is the Prima Fina Bear silicone brush. And I'm just adding it everywhere. Now don't mind my short, horrible nails. I was not able to go and get my nails done. I mean, everybody gets their nails done when they get do these videos. Well, I don't. And I try to sometimes fix them, but I just had a really rough week and I didn't have time to go. So they look like this, but oh well. Okay, so to do this, all I want to do, I want to kind of wrinkle it so it can create that really nice texture. You see what I'm doing? I'm pushing it in to create that nice texture. Now this video, it is part of a blog hop or a video hop because each one of us has their own present that we gave to each other being featured on our blog. So just hop along with everyone else. I'm going to the link below the links to all the other blogs and, or YouTube channels so you can see what each person created for the other person. There's some really nice stuff there and everybody does something according to their style. And just want to point out if some glue is missing or some gel is missing, you can just go ahead and just stick it underneath. So we're all exchanging and in this one, stay tuned till the end of my video because I do have a small giveaway, well not small, a giveaway for those who watch my video and comment. So all you have to do is just comment below my video and you can enter the giveaway. But to see what the giveaway is, you can go to the end of my video and I mean you can stay till the end of my video to see it, okay? And I really try to give some cool stuff. I actually haven't decided yet what I'm giving, but I will take a picture of it and show it to you. And I mean, the only thing that I do ask is that if you like supporting me, then please subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, if you subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. So you see the cool texture? I'm really excited about this. And what I'll do is I'm actually going to wrap this underneath so I'm going to put glue also on the 
on the edges and then wrap this around so as you can see I put some glue on the outside to seal it because this napkin is so fragile it could really create uh, really rip easily so you need to let this dry really well and what I'll do is I'm just going to put a napkin all around I don't want it to rip so I'm going to do this all around and this might be a part where I might stop and not show you how I do this but just wrapping it around putting glue and wrapping it around and so forth like this oops like this so you see I'm just basically wrapping it I might cut it from the back because if it's too long but I want to make sure that it wraps all around and it creates that texture around too so all I'm doing is I'm just putting glue on the edges and then gluing this to the sides okay so i'm going to continue doing this off screen and then get back to you when it's all done so to embellish this and to create a focal point it's really important to find lots of different embellishments of different sizes and i like doing using recycled stuff as well and i went and gathered a lot of stuff and i went and before I actually started recording this, I went ahead and kind of planned out what I wanted to do. So here you see all the metals. I already have like the plan of how I want it and I take a picture of it. So if you see my phone right here, I take a picture of more or less how I want it. It doesn't always like at the end come out the same way, but just so I have a reference, so I don't forget how it is, how it looks. And then all I do is just basically place it. And this is uh, basically two lids. I love using lids. You're not going to see this because I'm going to be covering it with gesso or with paint or whatever it is that I want to use it for. So it's just easy to just recycle. I keep all the lids because they're great for adding volume to things. And then I just start basically applying, I mean, putting the different embellishments. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how I think about putting the embellishments and what is important to me in terms of arranging them. The most important thing is the focal point, and this is definitely my focal point, and I usually start with my focal point. I figure out what I want to focus on, on and then I continue with everything else. So, I gathered more metals, and I like to sometimes even cut my metals. So for example, I just take this, and I didn't cut it in advance because I didn't want, I wanted to show you, that you can cut some the metal sometimes and then you basically have two metals because all I can do is I can hold on let me bend it backwards a bit I can just put it here and then I can put the other one here and it creates texture in both sides now I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my phone here so I can see what I'm doing so I have this flower over here and it has a gear on top of it. Oops, Maybe I'll put this a little bit higher. A gear on top of it, and then one of these Prima Finna Bear little water lilies. I think they're called, I don't know what they're called, but I like that they look like water lilies to me. There is also, where is that other flower? Here's another flower. This one is more kind of this way. And right on top of this one has this flower. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter what metals you use. Gather stuff from everywhere. I always, always, always gather lots of things. And then eventually I, I just like use them. I buy things on eBay as well. So I recommend you going to eBay to put metal embellishments or metal embellishments for scrapbooking. You will find lots and lots of different things. In the little water lilies, I, I put a little gear inside. I think it's really cute. And then there is the these swirls, which I actually I also cut in half. This is I cut it off half in advance, but this is the same swirl. It's cut in half. It's a Prima resin. It's an old one. It might be still. I'll see what I can link up. I will try my best to link up as many things as I can. I don't promise that I can always link everything, but I will try my best. So this one kind of goes here. And then there's a bunch of gears and then sometimes I just get bored of doing the same thing and I just end, I mean, 
of continuing to follow what I'm supposed to be following here. So I just end up doing my own thing. So at least you have, as long as you have like the main metal things in, in order, you're good to go. So the focal point, of course, is the most important. Oh, and yes, I want to say that I was going to talk about focal point. So focal point has to be like the center, has to be seen. And it has to be that everything kind of your eye focuses directly on the focal point. In order to do that, you need different embellishments of different heights or basically layered in different heights and also different sizes as well as I like bunching them together because when you put things separate in different areas of the canvas or in a project then what happens is if you put something here the eye will immediately draw itself here and will take it away from the focal point so you're trying to bring all the embellishments to be focused on that exact focal point that is the most important thing I'm going to use this height. You see what I mean by I use other embellishments to create height. Um, and let's see, what did I else did I do? I think I put some gears right, like right up here. No, but I think I did this one. So then after this, and I'm not going to, I'm, I will show you what I'm doing, but I don't want to specifically show you the whole thing because it takes too long. I want to show you how to how to how I glue it now this one is the art one this one will go here but I'm not going to put it until the end because I don't want to cover it in paint or anything like that so I'm just going to leave it till after I paint everything but I did want to see where it would go so I know that it kind of goes right there and that's good uh, let's see I want to add this oh my picture is gone uh, let's see where is it sorry okay there it is let me zoom in a little bit well I need some smaller gears kind of here at the end mm -hmm. so I like putting the bigger embellishments towards the center and then the smaller ones kind of dissipate to the edges so that's usually my technique you don't have to follow that but it's just ideas and I'm trying like to help you figure out how to create mixed media uh, how to create and um, how do you call this how to oh gosh I my brain is not working because I'm trying to think of where to put this but basically how to create a focal point how to arrange everything so that's what I mean and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue everything with the heavy gel, heavy body gel from Prima. And I will just show you how I glue one thing. I'll show you how I glue the center. But truthfully, I don't think it's interesting for you to see everything being glued. I think it's basically a waste of time for, for me to show you everything because it's just applying a little bit of glue to the background. So, so all I do is I take a little... A, spa a spatula, not a spatula, a palette knife, and I add glue. And this is pretty strong glue, although it takes a while for it to dry. And I just glue things wherever things are touching. So if it's not touching anything else, then I can't glue it, right? So hold on, this one will go to that one. This one will go here. So this one is touching it all, touching the whole lid, right? So any anywhere that the lid is touching everything, it will work so I apply it with this with a palette knife it's really easy to apply and then you just glue it and then I take this one now I have to kind of gauge where it's going to attach right so it's not touching at all it's only touching in these two corners so I go ahead and I just attach it in that those two corners. So you understand what I mean about attaching it, right? There we go. And the last thing is to attach this. And this is how I basically roll, roll with it. I just attach and go and make sure it's centered. One thing that I do, and this is really important to do, is I have a small paintbrush and let me just get the right one the one okay where is it 
Okay, hold on, I'm just getting it. I have a small paintbrush that I try to keep just for these type of projects where I need to um, where I need to glue stuff and I use it because it gets ruined with the gel so I use it to just clean up the gel wherever it's not supposed to be so that way it doesn't come out with these bulky things in the edges so there you go I cleaned that part and now I have my focal point and all I have to do is just glue the other stuff so I could take obviously take these apart take this and then glue this one and you want to hold this one really well so all I do is just add a bunch of gel to the back of this so you know what I mean so for big things I add a lot of gel for smaller things I add a little bit but you want to add enough that it holds well and the nice thing about this gel is that it's so thick that it holds things immediately you don't have to you don't have they won't be wiggling around that's what I mean so there is that and then oops, I have to add this so I have to be very careful because obviously I added this first but this one only adds on is only touching at the edges so I have to be very careful that I, it doesn't that it doesn't attach to anywhere I mean that it attaches to it right and it glues so I try to put a little bit and whatever sticks out as I said I'm going to remove it with my paintbrush that's why I keep that paintbrush handy so once this is glue and once it's finally dried it's permanent so that's why you want to know exactly where things are going to be and I'm going to kind of smush it around to make sure that it it glues properly this is the most important part right the focal point the rest you can just wiggle and play around with but the focal point is the most important now I'm going to glue everything off screen and I'll come back and have it dried up okay so I glued everything as you can see and things shifted a little bit and I also use these type of flares these are all like flares decorative and scrapbooking flares and I use them to kind of gain some height for some of these embellishments I don't, this is I'll just show you what I mean I'm going to glue it underneath because I realize this flower for example is too low so all I do is I just find some it doesn't have to be a flare this could be a button it could be anything right you just put it underneath and then you glue things on top you might need to add some more glue so add some more glue there and then it kind of raises it and I don't think you, you know if you can tell I will lift it up for you to see from this side so it kind of gives it height so you see how they're like in different heights like this one is higher I also put a flare underneath this one and that way it really becomes like 3d and has like these beautiful layers everywhere something also moved like this key went here at the end when I started putting the embellishment some things sometimes things don't go as I planned and that's okay it doesn't really matter that's why I take a picture to, so I can kind of guide myself but if it doesn't come out exactly the same that's okay as well and then again at the end you can just go and clean up any glue everywhere keep the same brush for this and just keep it soaking in water that helps to to make it so it doesn't completely dry up so when you're not using it keep it soaking in water you can buy cheap ones from like the dollar store and that way you're not like ruining an expensive brush but it's a really good tip to be able to remove glue from everywhere so it doesn't stick out like that and doesn't look ugly so okay well this I'm going to let dry for a few hours if not overnight we'll see how long depending on what else I have to do because you want to have this really really dry you can heat set it if you want to but you but that will take a while as well so I just let it dry work on another project and then I'll come back with this so you will only see this in a few minutes all dried up but it's been a few hours okay so it's fully fully dry now I actually let it dry overnight just because I got busy kids came home and I couldn't do anything else so now it's all nice and dry so if you do have the time to wait and 24 hours or at least the next till the next day it is much easier for everything 
now all I'm going to do is add some white gesso and the reason why I want to add some white gesso to tell you the truth I actually don't, don't know what I'm going to add on top of this but I want to have everything even and primed and the, I mean, although I'm using the heavy white gesso from Prima which is the one that I often use and it's heavy enough that sometimes you only need to do one layer of <clears throat> of the gesso I have a feeling that I will have to do a couple of layers so I will not bore you and have you see all the layers it is pretty boring so I will probably cut some of these areas but all I'm doing is just applying it with a paintbrush covering everything and the reason why and I will explain a little bit about gesso and what it does and then it's easy for you to then maybe understand this is more like a little beginner thing if you don't he want to hear the spiel then all you have to do is just fast forward this part I will definitely of course fast forward it as well but if you do want to hear what gesso is helpful for then please like stay and enjoy my explanation because this can help you not only for altering any type of project, but it can also help you for art journaling or even for scrapbooking, card making, anything you do. So the nice thing about the gesso is that it's a really nice primer for any type of product that you put on top. So if you want to add, let's say, sprays or acrylic paint, or basically any type of product mica I don't know basically anything it's good to have a base of gesso now the question people always ask me is do you always have to put gesso so the answer this the straight answer is no however it is helpful to do it and it depends on the situation and this is why it's so sometimes confu it's so confusing for everybody because they say well this person said that you should always prime with gesso and this person said you don't have to always prime with gesso so it gets very 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 confusing for everyone so uh, while I'm painting I will try to explain a little bit about gesso I did do a whole video on the different types of gessos that are on the market and that in on sorry the different types of not only brands but different types of gessos what are they for how do you use them and so forth so you can go watch that video on my channel but I will really try to explain why I'm doing the gesso here today so as you noticed I put a lot of different embellishments that are different colors and consistencies and obviously height so I put some resin and I also put some metals I have paper in the background or napkin paper I have lids that are made out of plastic so the different materials react differently with any type of medium so if you want to get an even coat or if you want to do a project where you want to add the same thing everywhere you do need the base to be the same imagine if you had a wall and the wall was made out of different materials so one part of the wall was made out of whatever drywall the other part of the wall might be made out of metal the other part of the wall may be made out of plastic and if you added paint on it and you went to paint a wall what would happen is that you would end up oh i don't think i glued that one you would end up with different looks like the paint will attach itself differently depending on what the surface underneath is so in order to even this out you need to put a primer and in reality when you're painting a wall you need to put a primer anyways so number one the gesso can help prime things which is great in terms of evening it all out so everything looks the same but the other thing that gesso do, and this is why you prime your walls as well, is because you want to have a nice base. And not only that, the gesso has kind of like a gritty texture to it. So it can take a lot of mediums. It kind of not absorbs them, but 
kind of it, it lets them seep into it while things like plastic or metal if you're going to add things like spray will reject it will resist it if to say because they're so smooth so what gesso has is that it has that gritty texture that allows you to that allows you to put any type of medium on top important thing that you have to do when you're painting everything the same is turning the canvas around making sure you get things everywhere as you can see I always, you can't just like turn it on one side because sometimes the the colors differ at the top so that's why and it's really hard for me to know where the gesso was here so I'm, you see me going over some of the areas it's because I actually don't know where I put the gesso and where I didn't because everything is white sometimes I cover things in black and that's a little bit easier but today I want to try a different thing so I want to try something different I actually don't know what mediums I'm going to put I'm going to decide soon but I really wanted to cover everything in white that was my idea and all you have to do is just make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies and I haven't really covered everything really well but once you put the second layer you will see that things get covered better so I just want to add some more gesso in between things here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it out dry it up I meant to say so as I said, the gesso can give it a really good base. So when you're adding other colors, you're not, you're not, oh, sorry, when you're adding other mediums and colors and everything, it's all even. And it also protects the, the embellishments and the paper. So the big gesso here, because this is such a thin paper, it protects it. And another reason why I want this on the paper and this is an important reason is because if you remember I sealed I actually sealed the the um, tissue paper or sorry the napkin with some gel and gel is actually really smooth and if you have to use it I mean sorry if you have to add anything on top it will just resist it so the gesso goes on top of the gel and basically helps give it some tooth and give it some basically grasp to the paints so i'm going to dry this up i'm not going to bore you with the drying and then i'll come back and do a second layer so i partially dried this and in order to give a good coverage you do need to put more layers the only problem with putting more layers is that it tends to cover the texture a little bit on some of the embellishments so you do need to do thin layers you can do a lot of layers but more it's more importantly to do thin layers so you actually get that coverage another great tip is to actually have your um, your dryer your heat tool on while you're adding it so you're basically killing two birds with one stone and what you're doing is you're able to add the gesso and dry it at the same time so what is happening is that it goes a little bit faster it's easier that way and you don't have to add a double layer on everything you could add just a double layer on things that didn't get covered properly so for example this resin is already covered properly you don't need to give it another another cover you only want to go for things that actually do not get covered properly so the flowers and basically any dark metals this lid that's a really good tip to have to just use this at the same time and you can do this with the first layer as well I just didn't want to talk over the the dryer as much so you see how it's getting covered better I'm going to do this off screen and then I'm gonna come back and oh and I forgot you see here I need to get inside here I just realized that I didn't get the lid because I'm looking at it this way so I will get one one more layer at least I will let you know if I do end up adding a third layer okay 
I did basically one more layer and added a few touch-ups wherever I needed to and this is basically ready for painting but I actually changed my mind about what I had was going to originally do in terms of like the sprays paints I wasn't sure and you remember this little piece that I wanted to add I want to now add it over here and I also cut out a ward from a new die that I bought this is actually a die from Michaels it's called it says dream I bought it on sale it's a recollections die and I cut it out of really thick kind of like almost chipboard looking paper and I'm going to glue this here onto this okay because I changed my mind about what I wanted to do and I want to cover this in white so although I said I was going to put it at the end I am not going to I'm going to glue it now so first I'm going to glue this one over here and then this one that says dream I might use actually soft gel for this one only because it's easier when it's paper so I will just take my silicone brush and basically add it to this side I can also add it here and to the back of it so what will happen is that not only will I seal it to the back not only will I glue it to the background but I'm also going to seal it with the gel so this is what I'm planning on doing I will have to let this dry a little bit and then cover it with the uh, with the white gesso again and you can definitely heat set this I'm not going to wait until tomorrow for this it's not necessary but I really wanted to have that word dream in here I think this is a nice gift for somebody so here we go so basically it's there because I have another idea of what I'm going to be doing so let me dry this and then I'll cover this in white gesso the same way as I did before. You don't need to see that part because it's just pointless for me to see. I paint this the same way I painted everything else and I'll come back when it's all ready. Okay, so I covered the art ward and also the dream ward with the gesso after gluing it. And now I'm going to cover the whole thing with this impasto paint. Art Alchemy from Finnabare. Art Alchemy Impasto Paint from Finnabare. This is the jade color. It's kind of a turquoise color. I recently did another project similar to this one in the, I mean, similar technique where I used this jade paint to cover stuff, but I did it over black gesso. And I wanted to show that these paints have such good coverage that you can do it over white or black gesso and it will look similar. And all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cover everything, the whole canvas. I want to make this canvas look really rustic. And to do that, I want to include some of this patina-like or turquoise-like color. Now, you could use the rust paste set, the one that is the patina set, which comes with a blue color or a turquoise color. The only reason why I'm not using it is because I really want to have a smooth surface as much as I can over the embellishments. So if you want to get like a distressed or like a very gritty texture, then go ahead and use the one, the patina one. And I have it, let me just see, oh yeah, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one I'm talking about. So you see it has the three colors, but they're pretty, it's pretty similar I mean it's a little bit more of a bluish color but it's still turquoisey and it looks really good on this is the mint color it comes in three in a set of three but truthfully what I want to use I want to use the impasto paint because that one doesn't have that greediness in it and I really want to have a smooth smooth surface that way it doesn't take away from all the little embellishments that I have so when I find that when I use the other paste, which I've used a lot to do the exact same technique, I find that it's really gritty and kind of has like that texture paste. It's like a texture paste. So because of that, it ends up taking away a little bit from the designs, especially something like this, like that says art. 
it might cover some of the words or it might take away a little bit out of the design of each of the each of the embellishments because it's so gritty the layer is pretty thick now i have to say that i really 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 love the impasto paints i never thought i would love them that much this is only my second project using them and this first one was actually last week and i did the exact same technique i love how the thickness of it it covers gives such a good cover you don't have to do two layers for anything so i really really like that because of this and if you want to dilute it a little bit let's say you don't want you want it a bit more uh, of a diluted version all you have to do is just add a little bit of water and it will just be a, li a little bit easier to just spread it around it still gives you the same coverage of obviously don't dilute it that much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically cover everything the same way I went with the white gesso and this is why I didn't care if I wasn't covering the white gesso fully everywhere like if you could still see it in the back because I knew I was going to use paint to cover this if you're going to use something like sprays then you might want to give the gesso an extra layer but you don't have to even with that the sprays will give a nice coverage just the technique is different now this is going to take me a little while to cover and i don't really want to show you everything because it just takes it's too long to show you how how much um you know how much i'm covering and it's basically just painting and i don't need to show you how to paint because i'm sure you know how to do that so the only tip i'm going to leave you with is that once you cover everything then heat set it and if you want to let the paint flow a little bit more all you have to do is put a little bit of water on your mat and then just mix everything with the paint i try not to put the paint on my mat i don't want to waste it i don't ever know how much paint i'm going to use so i like using it directly from the tube but you don't have to do that and i'm also going to cover the edges with this paint as well so let me finish this off screen and i'll be back when it's all done okay so i basically covered everything i tried to get into the nooks and crannies with a little paintbrush also i must have, i might have missed some places but because i'm adding more stuff onto it it doesn't really matter if you miss like here and there if you're really particular and don't want to miss anything you can give a second quote coat and go ahead and fix things if you want to like wherever you see white um as i wanted to say you see that it gave a beautiful coat this is only one coat of paint and it covered everything beautifully it did the same thing when i did it on black in my last project so go check that out as well to see the difference and you'll see that it almost looks the same and now what i want to do is i want to use the rust paste effect this is the red rust because i really wanted to create an oxidized look and the first thing i'm going to do is besides opening the jar is that i want to create a washed out rust look in between the embellishments and so let me show you how to do this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of the rust underneath the embellishments if you think of something that is rusted you can think of the areas where it actually rusts where the metal rusts it's not specifically at the top it's usually underneath where there is contact with either the ground or the air water sometimes there's water on the ground and then what I'm going to do before it dries up I am going to sp spray it with water and let it flow I want to let this flow to make it look as if the rust is forming around so to do that I need to kind of create a little bit of a movement and whatever you don't like if there's something that you just think it doesn't look nice all you do is you grab a wipe and you might need a lot of wipes for this just because it does tend to accumulate underneath and you can just wipe it off so again it's just a matter of like wetting it enough so it will make it look as if it's 
if it's rusting there. And that's basically the first layer of the rust space that I'm going to add. I want to make this look as if it has rusted in between the embellishments. The second layer will be a different thing with the same rust space, but I first just want to show you how I'm doing this first layer. And it doesn't matter if it's too watery. As I said, you can always wipe it off, but you don't want it to be too um, too straight. You want it to kind of look as if it's flowing down. And that's basically the look that I'm going for. I'm going to add some over here. And it's okay to also add some in the centers of the embellishments. Like sometimes, right, things kind of tend to become a little bit rusty in the center. And there you go, and it kind of ties it all in. So here in the center, we can put some, and in this center, you can also, go, like if you want, you can spray the water first, and then go ahead and add the rest. So it will still spread the same way. So I really like, I wanna put it around the lid, and I think I really like the fact that I'm going to spray everything. So that way it flows really nicely. And the nice thing about the the background is that because it has that really nice like wrinkled effect it looks really cool when the water kind of pools in between the wrinkles i find that if you if i would have used the other paste which is the one that is like this which is really texturized it would have given me a little bit of a different effect because it would have covered some of the designs. But because I use paint and the paint is pretty smooth, it worked really nicely. Now, I do want to kind of, you know, make it rust inside this, this, um, inside this, the lid. And I find that the more water I add, the more it spreads and it starts looking really cool. So, yeah, so that's basically the, the, the idea, the idea of how to do the rust effect. And you don't want to add too, too much. As you see, it's getting rusty, but you don't want to add too much yet. You want to have that effect going off the page and that's okay but we are going to do a different F rust effect after once this is dry and i'll show you what i mean so the best way to explain where the rust goes it goes in the shadows it goes underneath because if you think of how something gets rusted it usually is underneath things it's not at the top of whatever object is there so here you see that I managed to spread some of it. And this is just the first layer. I want to be able to dry this layer. So that way I can add some more of the rust. So let me dry this up and then I'll show you what I'm doing the second time around. Now this red rust paste is actually one of my favorites. It comes in the same set, sorry, it comes in a separate set of the ones that I showed you before, the patina effect. This is part of the original set, but it also comes in this big, big tub. So if there is one specific that you love the most, which is for me is the red rust, you can just purchase this red rust and you don't have to purchase the whole set. I do love this set. I love it when it has the brown and the gold as well. But I do love the rust paste the most, the red rust, because you can really create neat effects with it. Now, what I want to show you is the second part of the rusting. In this one, I'm using a flat brush for it because I really want to get in into the edges of the canvas and kind of bring things in. This will frame everything together. So the first step was to actually just create that drip effect. Now I'm going to add a little bit of 
a dry brush on top of some of the areas. So as you can see, I'm, I haven't even dipped my brush back into things. I'm using the same brush the whole time, the same little bit of rust that I just used. And I created this really nice border for this canvas. And I'm not even dipping it again. I might dip a little bit, but you want to have your brush as dry as possible. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Oops. And one of the things I like doing is that I like to really explain why I do things, explain the process, but also explain why I'm doing certain things. So for example, in this case, I really want to add that rust around because it really frames everything. It also makes it look as if it's rusted at the edges of the canvas, which is really, really nice to see. I'm going to do the same thing and accent accentuate these circles, basically the lids, because I want to kind of create this matching effect of the circle inside the circle. In this case, I'm going to just add a lot of the rust paste with a dry brush technique at the edges of most of the embellishments. So that means that the blue, or I mean the turquoise or the jade color, is underneath while this really nice red rust is at the top. And it makes it look really authentic. So you want to make sure, as I said, that you have a really dry brush. Otherwise, you will not be able to see the texture and the highlights of all the embellishments. So I do want to add a little bit at the edges as well. So it's already almost there, just a little bit. I'm just still using the same paintbrush. And you can, if you there's something you want to hide or if there's a little bit of white, then you can just add a little bit more of it. But the whole point is to try and create a dry brush technique, which means that your paintbrush has to be very, very dry. You can't have a lot of medium on it. You can't have a lot of paint on it or rust paste in this case. That's what a dry technique is. And in order to achieve that, you have to take a little bit dry it up on your mat or on a palette or whatever you have and then just apply it to your canvas or to your project test this if you don't know how to do this then you can just test it with something else okay so this really creates an even effect everywhere and you can add some more in certain areas where you think it needs a little bit more and take away wherever you don't want it to be. So let's say I put it in a place where I think it's too much. All I have to do is just grab a little wipe and basically remove a little bit of it. And it removes the, or the excess that I don't want. So it can create that really cool effect as well. So this is basically... You saw how simple and how little bit I use of this. So you could definitely have this paste last you for a long time. Just make sure you seal it, seal it really, really well. So there we go. And you see, I think I added too much here. So all you do is you just remove some of it and that's it. Uh, you want to try to add things in the edges more than anything. So... And this dream is kind of getting lost here, but I'm hoping once I add the wax, it will, it will come back to life. So this is the next layer. I'm going to dry this up and I'm going to come back with the wax, which is my favorite part because it brings all the highlights to the surface, which is so, so fun to do. So as you can see, there is a washed out area here that it created that really nice washed out effect and then you have the stronger area of the rust that is on basically a lot of the edges of the embellishments so let me dry this up and i'll be back in a few seconds 
Okay, one of my favorite products that came out last year are the Art Alchemy waxes. These are two of my favorite colors, the Vintage Gold and the Aged Brass. They're very similar to each other, but a little bit different. And I like combining them together. You don't have to do that. You could just use one or the other. And this year, uh, Finn came with this these brushes that you could use to apply. So you can use these. Is their stipple brushes and you can use these to apply and they come out they they help out with applying it to the different embellishments the nice thing about these waxes is that they're not so toxic and they smell really really good I like applying these with my fingers so you have the option to apply them if you want with this but I love applying them with my fingers I have better control over where I want it Sometimes when I need to get into the nooks and crannies, then I go ahead and I and I use a paintbrush, but or a, or this type of brush. But truthfully, I like using my finger. I find it that it has the best control over what I want to do. So what I'm doing is I'm using my fingers and lightly touching the surface of each one of the embellishments, and that brings a little bit of light to this to each embellishment I also want to do this at the edges this will frame everything I really find that gold is the perfect gold or a brass it's like the perfect uh, color to add to any type of rusty kind of look this is my favorite, favorite combination of colors. Really favorite. And I think I do this a lot. I do these type of projects a lot. But as I said, I've never used the impasto paints. I've always used the rust pastes and the patina pastes. So this is a first for me in terms of that. But the, but the concept is the same. So no matter what you use, even if you grab some kind of turquoise paint from your local art store, you're fine as well or even like you know start with something if you can't afford expensive paint then step with like affordable paint you know like you don't have to go and buy everything expensive I do recommend the rust paste I find the rust paste really helpful for doing this type of project especially if you want this look then I find it really helpful otherwise you could just use metallic paint to create the rest I do love the wax don't get me wrong I love 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 the wax so I can't tell you not to get the wax because I love it but and it's lasts forever I've had this one for two years and it's still so much left in it so it does last for a long time so I can't say that it doesn't I am I uh, always try to be honest with everyone now here is where I want some of the paintbrush to get in there and create some. So some places my fingers don't fit, but the paintbrush does. So this is where it's helpful to have something like this. And there's different sizes of this. There's actually a smaller one as well. So that works out well. So as long as you're not pressing hard, your finger will only touch, or the brush will only touch the edges. And it will create this really cool effect in the background so yeah I really like this so just add as much as you think and figure out where you need to and figure out when you want to finish like it's basically there's no rule about when you have to stop adding it's just when you feel that you like your project and I'm very close to that right now the only place I want to add is maybe a little bit on the edges here. Yeah, because you want to make everything match properly, right? So I'm just adding a little bit here, here and there. Not a lot. It's basically, you don't even need to put a lot on your finger. I put a little bit and it lasts for so much. They're pretty powerful and pretty permanent. One more place I want to add a little bit is, is in here a little bit, a little bit in there. 
So I just like that that it says Art Dream. I like that it says Art Dream. Yes. So this is my project. And I'm really excited to gift it to exchange for my gift exchange. So thank you so so much for coming to my channel. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up. Look, my fingers are already in thumbs up position. And share it. Please share it on social media. It really helps me. It helps you. It helps everyone. So if you could share it on your Facebook page or on Instagram or on Pinterest, wherever it is, I would so appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. And have an amazing day. Bye.